Please welcome Student Council President Lillian Kirker. Please join me in saying the Pledge of Allegiance. I pledge allegiance to the flag of the United States of Please remain standing as senior Emily Kane will perform the national anthem. Salutatorian of the class of 2018, Emma Weston, will now address the class. Good afternoon, students, family, friends, and faculty. Thank you for joining us this afternoon. After four years of hard work and many nights with little sleep, the class of 2018 has finally arrived at the end of high school. Personally, about a week ago, when I was approached by our dear principal, Mr. Gonker, I thought my high school assignments had finally come to an end, but little did I know that my planned week of Netflix would be replaced with writing and overcoming a fear of public speaking, <laughs> admittedly with some Netflix thrown in. First of all, welcome and thank you. Without the help of all of you, our teachers, families, and friends, none of us in the RMHS class of 2018 would be here today. Thank you to our teachers for gifting us with knowledge. Even though I may not remember how to construct a confidence interval in a few years, there are many lessons I will carry with me forever. My teachers have taught me more than just formulas. Their lessons on life and perspectives will stick with me. Thank you to the friends whose shoulders we could lean on and who gave us a break when we needed one. Whether it was a trip to Chili's or a movie in the basement, the laughs are much appreciated. Thank you to our families and specifically parents who have supported us in our education since our first days at preschool and kindergarten. From the first time we read Green Eggs and Ham to our last math test, our focuses may have changed. Instead of focusing on the best stuffed animal to bring in show and tell, we are now focusing on the best path to brighten our future. But through it all, our parents and our family's focus has never shifted, loving, caring, and supporting us no matter the circumstance. Writing this speech gave me an opportunity to reflect on high school. Between all the tests and homework, high school became so much more than just a place to learn. It is more than just this building at 62 Oakland Road. It is more than just the fields, more than the gym, and the Performing Arts Center. I see high school as more than just a place, but an era in our lives. These four years have been the most transformative of our lives, years that will be a part of us forever. Whether it was finding a new favorite hobby or club, meeting a new best friend, or discovering your answer to the age old question of what you want to do with the rest of your life. 
High School has supplied us with not only knowledge, but experience. As we move forward into the next few years, we will continue developing into our own people, something that started right here at RMHS. We are not the same class that entered this school four years ago. Four years from now, and four years after that, we will continue to grow and change into new people. But no matter where we end up, we, will, um, we are all connected in one way. Whether you have been in the Reading school system for all 13 years or just one, our lives have converged for at least this moment. We are all a part of the Reading Memorial High School class of 2018. No matter what happens, this will always remain true. In 20 years, when you are showing your yearbook to your kids, you may not remember every name, but do remember the teachers who gave hours of their lives to us, the friends that helped to shape us, and the memories that we made in these four years. No matter where we end up, in the wise words of High School Musical, we're all in this together. Thank you. Valedictorian of the class of 2018, Matias Schools will now address the class. My fellow high schoolers, we stand on a precipice of change this afternoon. This is the sunset of a childhood, but it's also the dawn of our own pursuit of happiness. This means we'll be leaving the watchful guidance our mentors and guardians come this fall. Thank you, parents. Thank you, teachers. Uh, and while many of us are excited for this change, for me, I'm worried. I was looking out on the nighttime skyline of Boston the other night during the senior boat cruise. Um, and I, I couldn't help but think that I was a little sad at the thought of what comes next. Am I ready for that? Am I ready for independence? Being independent means leading our own lives but being independent also means dealing with our own lives' challenges. Life is hard and there's gonna be hardship. It's the truth. Life is hard. So, in light of this, I wanted to use this speech to commemorate a student who has met those challenges in life. I wanna honor my, my schoolmate because he lives as an example for all of us as we go forward and as our own adversities ensue. He's someone whose ambition has no bounds lives fully, and has worked hard every day for the privilege of independence that we now inherit on this day. I wanted to read some of his writing for you all, because I think it can teach us some lessons about being independent. To give background of where this writing comes from, each year English students are asked to write an essay called This I Believe, where they basically outline uh, not only their unique perspectives, um, but most importantly, their unique beliefs about life. I want to share this student's essay that he so graciously gifted to me because it gives me hope that I can, that we all can, like a class, shine in the face of our own trials that are to come. He writes, I believe it is possible to overcome challenges because I have cerebral palsy. My entire life, I've tried to overcome this. We all know that old saying, use or lose it. Well, guess what? That's very true for me. I can't walk, so I have to think about it every time I stand and when I use my gait trainer. My trunk muscles are weak enough that I have to think about sitting up straight. That's why I'm always wearing my body jacket to help with this problem. I also have to stretch my muscles in my arms and legs and go to therapy every week without break once for occupational therapy, and once for physical therapy. CP affects me mostly physically, but one mental thing is that it takes me more time to do things. Even answering a question, I'm gonna step back and say, I didn't think about this when I first read this essay, because it's something I've taken for granted for a while. Even answering a question may take a little extra time, and as a result, a quiz or test it takes more than a regular block to complete. That's the regular time for any student. You know, in spite of all these challenges that he outlines in his essay, um, I, I think one extraordinary thing is that it's at this point, this turning point, that, he, that his essay begins to flourish with bright, shining hope for the better, regardless. Listen, sometimes we have to be creative in other ways. 
For example, regarding my school schedule, I have reduced course load to align time for therapy. I use an iPad and computer for typing because it's a better option than writing for me. We altered my electric shaver and toothbrush so that I could use it more independently. Independently. That's something we're all going to have to do in the future. My dad had to invent some foot straps for my wheelchair because it didn't come with any. My mom made an iPad stand for a tabletop. We've also been trying to build an iPad holder for my wheelchair at a PVC. Even seemingly small changes can have a big impact on my ability to do things independently. He teaches us that even the little things in our life now won't come easy later. The small things we take for granted now will present their own technical and mental challenges in the future. We'll all need to think creatively together to get to tomorrow. He can teach us a lot about life, but only if we listen. He continues, Cecil. There are positives and negatives to how society treats people with CP. For example, I have some opportunities that not everyone has. I get to go to Malden Special Olympics, and that's fun. Last summer, I participated in a clinical study on robot-assisted movement, which is only for people that might benefit. On the other hand, some of the people around me, some of the people around me have been a little impatient because it takes me longer to answer questions, and they give me the answer when they ask me questions, despite the fact I knew it in my own head. As we grow up, if we don't take time to listen to others, to learn from others, to hear stories such as these, then we'll never learn. We'll lack an important perspective. He goes on. I'm always trying to find new ways to be more independent. I'm a hard worker, and I'm determined to make the most of my abilities and do what needs to be done. My options are becoming better all the time with new technology. Therapy is now available using robot-assisted movement. There's also a possibility of a wheelchair that can climb stairs. That sounds cool. Exoskeletons are being tested. In theory, they could help people like me walk on their own. Looking forward, I feel confident that I'll find new ways to overcome some of my challenges from cerebral palsy. He finishes there. And it's that confidence that he finishes the essay with that gives me confidence. Like this student, if we put in our own share of hard work, if we put faith in ourselves, if we think creatively around the complications we face, then our generation this class will rise to the highest of heights. One interesting thing about this essay that I think the most telling is the fact that the student never complains. He never writes about it because that's what humility is about. And I had the chance to speak to Miss Terrio about this student a few weeks ago. She told me that he never complains. Throughout all this hardship, he does not give himself excuses. There's no whining. There's only drive. It's not something the student would write about themselves, but I think it's another attribute we can all look to copy in our own lives. Our futures are in our own hands, class of 2018. If we learn from the stories of the people around us, then we can do incredible things. That student is here with me now. Give a hand for Dan Texera, everybody. Thank you, Matthias and Dan. The RMHS singers under the direction of Ms. Kristen Killian will now perform I Lived.
welcome our Reading Public Schools Superintendent, Dr. John Doherty. We have just heard two amazing speeches and an unbelievable song. Can we give one more round of applause for those students? <laughs> Members of the Reading School Committee, faculty, fellow administrators, distinguished guests, community members, but most importantly, members of the class of 2018 and their proud families and friends. It is with great pride that I address you today as you complete your graduation requirements for the Reading Public Schools. Today marks my ninth graduation as superintendent, and throughout these nine years, I am proud to say that each class has made their own unique, positive impact on this school. The class of 2018 is no different. You have achieved as students, engineers, scientists, athletes, musicians, actors and actresses, and artists. You have earned our congratulations and recognition. You have worked hard and now you are ready to make your own imprint on the world. By completing your graduation requirements and receiving your Reading Memorial High School diploma today, you have finished a very important first leg of your journey. The road ahead will be both exciting and challenging with many different paths that you can choose, obstacles that you will face, and detours that you will navigate. For my remarks today, I would like to share with you four different road signs that you may encounter. These signs are meant to guide you throughout your journey and hopefully help you make a positive impact on this world. The first road sign is the stop sign. Stop to hug and thank your parents, grandparents, relatives, friends, and anyone else who has helped you complete today's milestone. And please, do it in person, and not by emoji on Snapchat, Facebook, Instagram, Twitter, text, email, or any other electronic means. These important people have provided you with support, boundaries, and their love. They have educated you and prepared you for this very moment so that you can now take the next steps. They have an abundance of memories which they have stored in their hearts and minds for days like today. They remember your firsts, such as the first day of kindergarten and the first time that you read a book. They remembered every new school year and took pictures along the way. This year's first day of school may have been particularly difficult because it was your last day of school before high school graduation. They also remember when you began participating in your first activities. It may have been dance or scouts, music or sports, followed by your first recital, your first badge ceremony, your first art show, your first concert, or your first game. These same people have also been there for your setbacks and disappointments, ones that wished you did not have to experience but they were there for you, providing guidance, advice, comfort, and sometimes just a shoulder to cry on. Your families have volunteered their time at many of your events and supported your fundraising efforts. Some have sold refreshments and raffle tickets and others have coached your teams, and probably all of them have driven you back and forth from one activity to another. They were there for many parts of your life, school life, attending parent-teacher conferences, PTO meetings, and keeping track of your progress. Then there was this year, when all of those milestones that have been going on for years became your lasts. Your last game, your last dance recital, your last concert, your last performance, and your last day of high school. All of these times, whether it was a first or a last, have provided both you and your family with so many wonderful memories. Each experience should prove to you that your years of hard work, combined with their years of support and guidance, have been worth the effort and time. They have done their best to coach, nurture, challenge, and encourage you to believe in yourself and in your abilities. The role they will now play in your lives may change, but they will always be an important part of your lives. As they step back a bit, they will continue to provide the guidance and support you will need. My second road sign for you along this journey is to go slow, proceed with caution, and to take the time over the next several days to express your thanks and gratitude to all of the teachers, staff, 
coaches, advisors, and administrators who most inspired you and who have made your journey a bit easier. This is an outstanding group of people who care deeply about your well-being and have dedicated their lives to educate you. Receiving this thanks and gratitude from you would be very inspiring to them and well received. This is their calling and their mission and their motivation has always been to do the best that they can to support you. We have all enjoyed teaching you and learning from you. It is teaching students like you that inspired us to become educators in the first place and this inspiration keeps our fires burning to educate future students. So now at this time, class of 2018, I would like you to, to take a look into the crowd. Find those teachers, find those families, find those parents, and give them a round of applause for everything that they have done for you during your journey. The next road sign ahead is merge. Merge your perspectives and treat each other with respect. Former First Lady Barbara Bush, who passed away recently, said, quote, never lose sight of the fact that the most important yardstick of your success will be how you treat other people, end quote. How we treat each other, both in person and on social media, will determine the future success of our society and, most importantly, the success of this great community. To that end, I am both inspired and impressed with you, your classmates, and your teachers have done to symbolize this important point. One powerful example happened two short weeks ago when our school community, led by the Reading Memorial High School Student Council, came together with the Unity Project on the front lawn of Reading Memorial High School. You'll know it's still, notice it's still there. This community art project is designed to highlight all the ways that we are the same, even amidst our differences. The project consists of 32 posts. Each post has an identifier, such as, quote, I'm a parent, or I speak English as a second language, or identif I identify as LGBTQ, or I've been adopted, or I like cats, or I like the arts, and so on. To symbolize this unity, participants tied pink yarn to posts that reflect their identities. This yarn represents our school, our town, and the world we reside in and the colorful web we created shows our unified community. Each string intertwines with others to create a web of interconnectedness. In the end, we see that we are all connected by something, and it's our diversity that builds a strong and vibrant community. Your senior student class officers, Lily Kirker, Molly Keene, Mia Lamboff, and Kat Neville, have been leaders on this project, and their purpose was very simple yet powerful to create hope for healing and a greater sense of unity in our school, our town, and our country. On the opening night of the project, they said, quote, over the past year, we have witnessed many divides politically, socially, and culturally, not only in our country, but also in our town. With this in mind, we as a community need to come together and be reminded that we need to embrace, celebrate, and understand these differences. With the simple act of connecting yarn, the Unity Project helps convey the idea that although we are different, we are all connected." End quote. Your class has given many examples of how to embrace differences and use them as strengths to build a better community. Here are a few other examples. Talia McNamara and Olivia Blumenshine have been working on an independent study this sem semester, which involves telling the stories of members of the Boston area refugee community. They've conducted interviews with several different people from all walks of life and have created biographical stories and painted portraits of the people they worked with. Their powerful work has been on display in the Reading Public Library. Zach Nazaro has overcome tremendous physical obstacles, which resulted from an injury he sustained in middle school. He underwent multiple surgeries and then required years of physical therapy to ease the tremendous pain which resulted from a nerve condition. He has demonstrated admirable persistence and determination to land where he is today. Gabe Ortiz has persevered through very difficult circumstances. In his time at Reading Memorial High School, Gabe has worked really hard in school and at his job at Brooksby Village, a retirement home in Peabody. He is a role model to his younger siblings, and he's going to continue to pursue his education studying accounting. Shannon Parks is a member of the Reading Memorial High School girls track team and girls soccer team and has won numerous awards for her accomplishments. 
Shannon, who has a learning disability, has a great work ethic, is an excellent role model for younger girls on the team. She is always willing to help others in a positive way and leads by example. She is an enthusiastic member of the chorus and has brought her love of music to the next generation at Kids Sing, where she helped to provide training and organize concerts and other musical productions. This experience has furthered her interest in working with children in the future. I am also proud to say that we have two members of the class of 2018 who have joined our armed forces. Jorge Ferreros and Shane Costello have already left to join the United States Marines and they are currently training at Paris Island. Jorge and Shane, thank you for defending our country. Thank you for defending our country and doing such important work and we wish you a safe journey and Godspeed. The students that I have highlighted are only a few of the many examples of the class of 2018 who are unsung heroes among us. It reaffirms my belief that our future is in very good hands. The final road sign is the exit sign. Each exit represents possibilities, a new path, a new opportunity, a new journey, a new dream. Choose the exit that you want. Dream big and keep chasing those dreams, no matter how big or impossible they may seem. Sometimes chasing your dreams may not always be easy. Often others may not believe in the exit that you have chosen and that you have to travel along a path by yourself or with a small group. That's okay. As the poet Walt Whitman said, quote, do not go where the path may lead, go instead where there is no path and leave a trail. Try and exit where your dreams can become a reality, where you can learn and grow, and where it is okay to question the status quo. Take an exit where someday you will say, I am glad I chose this path, instead of taking an exit where you'll be saying, I wish I chose another path. Remember, it's not about the destination that you reach, but the journey that you take along the way. It is my hope that these four road signs, stop, slow, merge, and exit, will help you navigate along your own personal journeys. To conclude my remarks this afternoon, I want to share with you a personal story. Four short years ago, my oldest daughter, Erin, sat where you are as a member of the RMHS class of 2014. Over the last four years, she has continued her own personal journey in higher education, and two weeks ago, she reached her next milestone by graduating with a Bachelor of Science degree from Hofstra University. As part of her gra his graduation remarks, Hofstra University President Stuart Rabinowitz gave his wishes for the graduates. I would like to echo those same wishes to you, the Reading Memorial High School class of 2018. I wish each of you all of the success that you think you need. I wish you the tenacity, the courage, and the good fortune to someday find life's work about what you feel passionate about rather than settling for one that neither challenges nor fulfills you. I wish you a sense of satisfaction and self-worth that comes from using some of your talents and some of your energy to help others who are in need. I wish you the wisdom to not forego the love of family and friends in some relentless pursuit of material success. I wish you the perspective to forgive yourself and learn from the mistakes which are inevitable. I wish you to have the strength to never give up because by not giving up, you will always have a chance to accomplish whatever you want to do in life. Finally, and probably the most difficult, I wish that you not become so preoccupied with achieving some cherished goal on some faraway day that you somehow fail to appreciate each and every day of your life. Class of 2018, we look forward to seeing where your journey will take you and how each of you will make a difference. We are very proud of you, and we will be rooting for you. On behalf of your parents, family, educators, and the entire Reading community, I congratulate you on your graduation. I wish you good fortune, happiness, and much success on your journey ahead. Thank you. Mr. Bacher to address the class and confer diplomas.
Thank you all again for joining us this afternoon in celebrating the class of 2018. I would be remiss if I did not first take the necessary time to acknowledge a number of important people who have contributed in making this special day possible. Please join me in acknowledging these individuals and groups with applause for their efforts. For the beautiful musical accompaniment, we thank the RMHS Symphonic Band conducted by Mr. Joe Mulligan and the RMHS Singers under the direction of Ms. Kristen Killian. For the coordination of today's graduation ceremony, we thank RMHS teacher Mr. Chuck Strout and secretaries Ms. Carmen O'Rourke, Ms. Stacy Scouton, Ms. Elena Napoli, Ms. Lynn Saratani Clark, and Ms. Kathleen Drummond. <laughs> For the preparation of our facility and school grounds, we thank head custodian Mo Hillis and his custodial team, and facilities director Joe Huggins and his team as well. Lastly, for their generous donation of bottled water, for staff and the graduates, we thank Reading Cooperative Bank. <laughs> Next, I would like to acknowledge and thank several groups of people who have helped shape the educational experience of today's graduates. For their leadership, we thank and recognize school committee members, Mr. Charles Robinson, Chair, Ms. Elaine Webb, Vice Chair, Ms. Jean Borowski, Ms. Linda Snow-Doxer, Mr. Nick Boyvin, and Ms. Sherry Van Den Acker. <laughs> For their support and vision, we thank our district leadership team, Superintendent Dr. John Doherty, Director of Finance, Ms. Gail Dow, Director of Student Services, Ms. Carolyn Wilson, and Director of Human Resources, Ms. Jennifer Bovey. For their leadership and guidance throughout our graduates' younger, formative years, we thank our elementary and middle school principals, Ms. Kelly Boswick, Ms. Sarah Levesque, Ms. Heather Leonard, Ms. Julia Hendricks, Ms. Lisa Marie Ibolito, Ms. Joanne King, Ms. Sarah Marchant, and Ms. Rochelle Shanklin, as well as their dedicated staff. for their dedication and commitment to the achievement of the class of 2018 over the last four years here at RMHS. We thank the educators, counselors, administrators, and staff of Reading Memorial High School. <laughs> their tireless efforts day in and day out working alongside of you seniors has helped you to reach personal and academic levels that you may have previously thought unattainable. For her diligence and dedication in helping to guide each of you to this special day, we thank Senior Class Assistant Principal, Ms. Jessica Terrio. <laughs> for their dedication to coordinating the many successful senior activities for the Class of 2018, we thank our hardworking Senior Class Advisors, Ms. Jennifer Agopian and Ms. Jennifer Canberra. And finally, we would like to honor and recognize the many families, friends, and mentors here today who have been such an integral part of these outstanding graduates' lives day in and day out over the past 18 years. Without the constant commitment to your children's lives and to the excellence of Reading as a community, the collective achievement we see today would not have been possible. Thank you. <laughs> Class of 2018. You are almost there. In less than an hour or so, depending upon how quickly this speech goes, and how quickly I read all of your names, no pressure, you will be forever the class of 2018 graduates. And we are all so proud of each and every one of you. What is always so very special about being an educator who works alongside of young adults is that we get the chance to see so many personal stories filled with dreams, accomplishments, a few inevitable disappointments, and many proud moments unfold before our very eyes. Every year we see the final act of a 12 plus year school play come to a triumphant end in front of all of your friends, mentors, and family with fanfare and of course our very own victory bell. This is the day that all of you have been working for, but as Matthias had said earlier, it can often be a day of mixed emotions because of the unknown that lies ahead. Although each of you will almost certainly create different stories in the years to come, 
all of you will face the unsettling times of change, adversity, failure, and loss at one point or another in your personal and professional lives. Now, many of you, of course, are probably thinking, Mr. Barker, it's graduation. What's with the doom and gloom speech? Well, my message to you is quite the opposite of doom and gloom. My message to you today is one that I hope inspires courage and confidence, humility and grace, strength and clarity. You see, today is not just the celebration of all that you've accomplished over the past 12 years. It is also the acknowledgement that in spite of failure, in spite of adversity, in spite even of people who have doubted you or have criticized you, you, class of 2018, collectively and individually, have had the courage, the strength, and the confidence to persevere, to look defiantly even in those sometimes terrifying, overwhelming moments, and press on. Today I am here to tell you, you are ready. You are ready not just as a result of your successes and accomplishments throughout your years of schooling, but even more because of the countless instances of mistakes, failures, rejections, and loss that you have faced and have overcome in sports, in school, performing arts, in your activities, in your social life, and in your personal life. In many ways, with 12 plus years of school and 18 or so years of life filled with failing and overcoming, you might even consider yourself an expert in mistake making, but also in mistake conquering. Like any skill in life, it takes practice and repetition to improve in the skill of trying, failing, and trying again. And here's the exciting news, class of 2018. Those of you who are most willing to swing and miss, again and again and again, until you finally get in all aspects of your life, you will obviously have the most failures. But the successes, the accomplishments, personally and professionally, will be extraordinary. Unfortunately, sometimes in education, we don't always emphasize the process and haven't quite figured out the best way to grade effort in overcoming failure. Sure, we give comments and pats on the back for having grit and not giving up. Some subjects, like math, even find a way to numerically ensure that effort is valued, requiring students to show their work. Effort in overcoming failure is also considered when determining scholarships and awards, and most recently, our efforts to develop core value awards at RMHS have been designed to do that as well. Overall, however, our school society at large does a great job of telling you kids to give their best and that mistakes and risk taking are a part of the process and are important, but that message does not always translate into success in the form of college admissions, which still emphasizes performance and results more than anything. The truth is, both matter. It does matter how you perform and what you accomplish. Results count. The bottom line in almost any field that any of you end up in is important. What you produce will determine your success, whether that be sales that you make, patients that you've cured, students who have been successful under your watch, designs that you've created, whatever your field, results do count. However, you cannot get to those results in any of those fields or in any personal goal if you do not make mistakes to learn from and to improve upon or if you become crippled by the fear of failure. You see, every one of you was once fearless, defiant in the face of failure. In those pictures displayed the senior slideshow on Friday, you saw your younger, most likely more fearless selves as innocent, oblivious dreamers, ready to take on anything that life threw at you, or at least the ability to more quickly forget about the tears and try again. Then, unfortunately, as the mistakes pile up, the rejections accumulate, and the losses hurt, we become more and more self-conscious, less and less likely to swing daringly for the fences, back like when we were empowered by the innocence of our youthfulness. We start to hear the voices of skeptics, sometimes critics who are jealous of our potential greatness, sometimes critics who are afraid of the changes that we represent, sometimes critics who are the very ones who love us the most, but are afraid to see us fall down and try to shelter us from our dreams. But most of all, the critic that lies between our own ears, that one that has heard it all and is engaged in an internal battle to be the four-year-old who reached for the moon or the 18-year-old that needs to come to terms with realistic goals because that's what you do when you're a grown up. And while, of course, self-awareness is an important quality, to honestly know who you are and what you want to do, but most importantly, what you actually need to do to get there and whether or not you're willing to put the effort in and overcome a great deal to reach this goal, 
of equal importance is the dream itself. The vision that excites and motivates you to be fearless or to conquer your fears and overcome your mistakes so that you will happily persevere because you are so clear, so invigorated by your aspiration. Famous psychiatrist and Holocaust survivor, Dr. Viktor Frankl, once said, if you have a strong enough why, you will figure out how. If you have a strong enough why, you will figure out how. In another story of perseverance and risk taking, famous inventor Thomas Edison was attempting to develop his latest invention, but was running into failure after failure, setback after setback, and was interviewed by a young reporter. The reporter inquisitively said, Mr. Edison, you have hundreds of successful inventions that have made you rich and famous. Why do you continue to waste your time on this one when you have failed almost 100 times? Edison smiled at the young and innocent reporter and said, young man, I haven't failed 100 times. I am 100 times closer to the answer. You see, it's truly a combination of having dreams that excite and motivate you through the tough times, the dull and difficult moments, coupled with a grit, a perseverance, and a fearlessness to try over and over and over again, learning from each past mistake to help you find the success and happiness each of you deserve. Have the courage and the humility to be reflective and listen to others around you, realizing everyone has something valuable to offer. However, stay true to who you are and what you believe most, because your moral compass and your dreams will at some point come under fire, especially when your principles and visions may affect others' comfort zones. The noise will eventually fade away, but your decision to listen and then act in accordance with what is right and who you aspire to be will remain forever. But most importantly, RMHS class of 2018, remember that in your ups and your downs, as you take on great challenges, face difficult losses, encounter immense change, and throw yourself purposefully into exciting and frightening unknowns, realize that you have years of invaluable experience that has prepared you and that you have an entire community of family, friends, and mentors who will always be here to help you back up when you are most down. Hopefully, as you realize the strength of that support, you can even more confidently pursue that which makes you most happy, most excited, most alive with the fearlessness of your younger self and with the skill, insight, and experience of who you are today. Congratulations, class of 2018. Thank you for everything. This time, School Committee Chair Mr. Charles Robinson and Vice Chair Ms. Elaine Webb will now join me for the conferring of diplomas. Please remember to hold your applause until all graduating seniors have received their diplomas. schools. Emma Dorothy Weston. Charles Wang. Lillian Ann Kirker. Logan Albert Thornton. Merrick Damiano. Abigail Bacci. Nicholas James Bonazzoli. Christopher J. Connery. Jill Matson D'Alessio.
Grace Ann Leahy. Natalie Marie Lovell. Abigail Virginia McFarland. John Carl Powers. Daniel Patrick Tompkins. Sebastian R. Amico. Joshua John Anderson. Nicole Sophia Andrade. Simon Bader Andrews. Matthew James Anzalone. Sarah Diane Yin Armstrong. Zachary N. Aronis. Christopher Charles Arsenault. Mirza Mohammed Janaid Beg. Daniel Paul Baker. Ashlyn Kate Baxter. Alyssa Michelle Bayliss. Joseph Bean. Courtney Bedingfield. Caitlin Elizabeth Bergeron. Michael Bellis. Kerry Elizabeth Blanchard. Olivia Joy Blumenshine. Alexandra K. Bogosian. Michaela Elizabeth Boudreau. Grace Faye Bowen. Daniel Richard Bradley. C. William Bresnahan. Bijan Brothers Sadri. Caleb Luca Brown. Andrew J. Bruckner. Benjamin S. Brungard. Drew Michael Buckley. You doubted the air horns. <laughs> Laney Sue Burdett. Gavin M. Burke. Emily Susan Kane. Casey Michael Callahan. Nathan Edward Cannon. Francesco Capone, Jr. Gianna Marie Carciero.
Lucas Ramos Cardoso. Jacqueline Luis Carnes. Jared Thomas Casalanovo. Mariella Rose Casciani. Antonio Centrella. Alyssa Cesario. Sheena Chang. Adam G. Chase. Emma Chase. Kelly Elizabeth Chetwin. Kevin Michael Chetwin. Joseph L. Chusa. Adam Joseph Clark. Owen M. Collins. John M. Comerford. Liam Jack Conley. Matthew Arthur Coughlin. Daniel Kranich. Brendan Joseph Crehan. Emily Nicole Cronin. Gabriel N. Cronon Galom. Mario Victor Couton the fourth. Catherine Nicole Dahlgren. Patrick Dane. <laughs> Vanessa D. Filippo. <laughs> Joseph David DeMarco. Brian Richard DeRue. Catherine DeRussia. Emma Laura DeBacco. Gabrielle Rose DiNapoli. Taylor DiNapoli. Chloe Francis Doherty. Calliope Rose Doherty. Brian William Doucette. John Lewis Driscoll. Darren Thomas Driscoll. Connor J. Duffy. Julia Siobhan Duggan.
Jackson Randolph Donnell. Connor John L. Christopher Thomas Fallon. Eliza Catherine Vandell. Matthew Peter Farwell. Samuel Faulkner. Madeline Zaruhi Feltis. Margaret Ann Fenley. Jake Francis Figenbaum. Christor R. Fitzgerald. Megan Lee Flynn. David A. Federa. Emily Foley. Julia Foley. Jared N. Fox. Cynthia Elizabeth Frain. Luyao Rose Friedman. Daniel Godre. Diana Rose Gagnon. Ryan Michael Gallagher. Madeline Gallant. Nicholas Darren Goudreau. Benjamin William Gauthier. Jack Dawson Geiger. Rebecca Marie Gernert. Shelby Alita Guerrier. Jonah Michael Jaquinto. Alec Mitchell Gibbs. <laughs> Hannah Gibson. Jack J. Gilliotti. Daniel Allen Graham. Michaela Ann Griffin. Alice Ann Grimes. Julia Lynn Haas. James Cameron Henry. Madeline Elizabeth Herrick. Haley Ellen Higgins. Samuel Hunter.
Christine Michelle Iantoska. Michael Kevin Jack. Roberto Harin. Trisha Elizabeth Jean. Emma L. Johnson. Lucia Florence Johnson. Molly Mae Jones. Kevin A. Jos. Michelle Kerala. Molly Ann Keen. Abigail Agnes Keating. Kerry Michelle Kilman. Jake Austin Kinsella. Maeve Helena Kolenik. Aaron Kwan. Thomas James Lamb. Mia Tully Lambroff. Joshua James Lannon. Gina Francesca Lanzi. Caroline Evelyn Lawhorn. Emily Rose Leahy. Andrew LeBlanc. Joshua Isaac Lieberman. Jacob Tenney Lim. Julia Constance Luby. Matthew Gerard Lusk. Ashley Liu. James Matthew MacDonald. Willow Machado. Daniel Morris Machera. Victoria Grace Macheras. Alexandra Caitlin Marr. Michael John Malley. Brian Anthony Manning. Michael James Maroney. Jared Robert Marshall. Kayla Maria Martinetti. Santiago Martin Sancho.
Randy Anthony McCusker, Jr. Madeline Rose McGonigal. Morgan Kate McGonigal. Jonathan Ford McLaughlin. Talia Madeline McNamara. Skylar Grace McPherson. <laughs> Talia Lynn Melendi. Henry William Menzi. Liam O'Brien Merlin. Trinity Savannah Marin. Madison Neely Meyer. Nicole Milrick. Sarah Annette Menard. Drew Modestino. Ryan Monahan. Trevor Jacob Morton. Rachel Emma Murren. Amy Danielle Musgrave. Zachary Michael Nazaro. Mackenzie L. Neary. Catherine L. Nestor. Catherine Grace Neville. Courtney Rose Nugent. Owen Timothy O'Brien. Caitlin Elizabeth O'Keefe. Spencer Oliver. Gabriel Chanich Ortiz. Molly Patricia O'Shea. Matthew Angelo Panacopoulos. Yanni Y. Pang. Shannon Teresa Parks. Juliana Grace Peacock. Matthew James Percy. Zachary M. Perez. Celia Lucia Peterson. Ethan Piani Homan. Viplov Satish Pimrale.
Olivia Snow Pinkham. Nicole Ann Politano. Michael Allen Fresho. Olivia Grace Reardon. Jillian Dolores Rhodes. Zachary D. Reif. Jamie Lynn Ritondo. Nicholas J. Rizzo. Evan Robinson Johnson. Christopher Lloyd Rogers. Dustin Michael Roche. Erica Lee Rothrock. Haley L. Roy. Lucinda Faye Russell. Will Sabatino. Victoria Danielle Safina. Olivia Nina Sahajan. Thomas Sampson. Sarah Santangelo. David Leonard Santasuaso. Alexandra Sartell. Caroline Teresa Sherber. Caroline Elise Schipoletti. Isabella Rose Scazzari. Evan Ross Shapiro. Jillian Victoria Shemansky. Sophia May Shemansky. Sage Ashton Schuyler. Christopher Michael Soraco. <laughs> Sophia Lourdes Spadafora. <laughs> Kevin B. Spear. Boris E. Staminov. Justin William Staniel. Jack H. Stanton.
Kirsten Alana Stevens. Caitlin A. Stalecki. Declan Paul Swanton. May Fitzpatrick Swanton. Eileen Winifred Sweeney. Brian Joseph Tinian. Daniel Paul Texera. Caitlin Elizabeth Tanian. Meredith Lee Taylor. Ryder N. Thomas. Tyler Kenneth Thornton. Jonathan Joseph Tierno. Gianna Toppy. Emma Jane Turner. Angelo Uchi the fourth. Cameron Michelle Van Loon. Olivia Mary Ventola. Kyle Robert Ventura. Hannah Lee Vogelin. Justin Andreas Vogelin. Gianna Maria Vozella. Helen Elizabeth Wodzinski. Jack Thomas Walsh. <laughs> Kathleen Donata Walsh. <laughs> Corey Stephen Ward. <laughs> Catherine Rose Weber. Madeline Rose White. <laughs> Hannah R. Weiss. <laughs> Andrew Douglas Yatsuhashi. I would now like to introduce the president of the class of 2018, Charles Wang. Hello, class of 2018. You look so beautiful from up here. Now, before I begin, I'd like to extend a sincere thank you to all of the 
parents, uh, faculty, staff, teachers, mom and dad who are over there. Um, it wouldn't be the same without you. And to Mr. Strout, Mrs. Gopian, and Miss Canberra, you guys are the best. And a special shout out to our honorary class of 2018 graduate, Mr. Bacher, for an amazing four years together. Thank you. Now, for the past month, I've tried to figure out and accept the reality of all of this. The fact that you have blessed me with this opportunity to, to lead, to make this speech, and to close out our four years together. But as I was thinking about the magnitude of where we stand, or sit, I couldn't help but think back to our humble beginnings as innocent little freshmen, or even beyond as wide-eyed sixth graders, and for me as a naive fifth grader. I remember a sixth grader who had not yet discovered that the bowl cut was out of style who was afraid to talk to girls and kept his feelings to himself, who was moved to accelerated English but acted dumb as a facade to the cool kids and attempt to fit in, who the teacher made sit next to the loudest boy in class as an attempt to dilute his personality, thank you, James Henry, <laughs> who kept his head down and let the world fly by him. I remember a seventh grader who had just begun to make friends and discover that awful truth in becoming self-aware, who still struggled to find his place in school unsure of what his purpose was. I remember a freshman, wide-eyed and determined to reach for the stars, unsatisfied with who he was, but undoubtedly sure of his potentials. He faced all of his fears and decided to affirm to himself the person that he wanted to become. I'm a happy person, he spoke. Vote for me and I'll make this school a happy place. And you did, you did vote for me. But that was just the beginning. I remember surviving Edline and the Zika virus and um, when Chipotle had E. coli, that was a rough time for all of us. <laughs> I remember all the snow days and that ironic excitement of picking up the phone and hearing, hello, this is Superintendent of Schools John Doherty speaking. <laughs> but on a more serious note, I remember a sophomore who began to realize that the role of class president was not for himself, who took a long look at the people and class around him and realized that it did not matter how happy he was. It was about the awesome people that surrounded him. It was about you who spoke about their opportunities and potentials and genuinely wanted to inspire a class to chase their dreams, who spent many nights twisting and turning in the knots of his blankets because he wanted his peers to see what he saw in them, whose mind was constantly occupied with a desire to share his experience, even if it were just to one person. I remember this year. I remember people constantly calling us the class with no spirit, the ones where enthusiasm was lost on. Sure, we were the obedient ones, who didn't cause trouble, but on the last day of school, that changed too. <laughs> Soon enough, we were uncontrollable, and our moniker became administration's headache. But as I thought about all of this, I was infuriated, because these past four years and three years as class president have taught me that that opinion is the opposite of who we are. Many times this year, I have been discouraged by the events around us. There were times where I felt like our education followed Paulo Freire's banking concept of teaching. And to those who have no idea what that is, it is the concept that students are defined by their teachers. That the purpose of secondary education is for teachers to fill their students with beneficial information only for students to re regurgitate it on command at some later date. Now, if that sounds familiar or beneficial to you, I'm sorry. The banking concept is reflective of an oppressive society, not the diverse and growing one that we should embody. So who are we? Are we mere members of an oppressive society? Are we mere products of our teachers? Are we defined by the opinions and judgments of others? Are we unenthusiastic and spiritless? No, class of 2018, I want you to, I need you to remember that we are the class of 2018. We are a class of free thinkers and individuals who will not shut up and regurgitate information. We are a people who will use our education and apply it to the world that we are about to encounter, who will reach for the ceiling and strive for the roof and try not to get caught again, who will, <laughs> for we define who we are. And as of today, we are the greatest class to ever exist. So as we enter into the real world, we must remember that we have a voice and we will not stand to let others speak for us. But no matter what experience high school has been for you, no matter how great or disappointing it has been, one day, as future generations look up to you for your wisdom, in awe of how old you are, 
will say, hell yeah, I was class of 2018. So I leave you with this. I remember a class who graduated as one of the brightest to ever do it at Reading Memorial High School, who stood up for what they believed in and paved their own paths, who spoke up in a broken and divided world that needed them the most, and who exceeded all the expectations of others. So go, class of 2018, remember who you are and where you came from, but note that this is all just rising action for who we will be. And I'll end with this quote from The Office. This one's by Daryl. He says, every day when I came into work, all I wanted to do was leave. So why in the world does it feel so hard to leave now? I will miss you, class of 2018. Thank you for everything. Mr. Bacher to dismiss the class of 2018 for the final time. Ladies and gentlemen, it gives me great pride to present to you the Reading Memorial High School class of 2018. Congratulations. Congratulations.